Shaglock is a, it's the last remaining inhabited village on the Inoko River. This is native Alaskan Degaton land. Two years ago, we started a snow machine traverse for the Fresh Eyes on Ice project. Uh, last year, we traveled from Willow to McGrath on the Iditarod Trail, left our snow machines in McGrath for the summer, and then about a week and a half ago, we came and picked up our machines in McGrath, loaded them up, and took three days to travel over the trail. We traveled via snow machine from McGrath to Shagluck on the Iditarod Trail. Fresh Eyes and Ice is a uh, community and citizen science project that's uh, run through the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Uh, the goal of the project is to understand how river and lake ice conditions are changing as the climate warms here in Alaska. All right, Nevaeh, give it another go. I'll hold it for you. We work with K through 12 school groups all across Alaska. Currently, we're working with about 14 groups. Uh, and they take, they adopt a site near their school uh, and they take ice thickness measurements for us once a month and send us the data. Okay, who's our data gatherer? Zero. The zero transaction. We have 21. River travel on the winter is way different than river travel in the summer, right? People uh, in Alaska live on rivers, knowing like when rivers freeze up, when they're safe to travel on, and when they're gonna start, when they start breaking up, those are all important things. People rely on good solid ice when we're traveling from village to village, trap lines, you know, hunting places. It's nice to have a, a good solid ice pack, good solid snow, uh, good depth of snow, you know, for ideal uh, hunting and trapping situations in the winter. We knew that climate change was happening around us. Our elders here in Shagluk were talking about uh, changes that were happening. You know, I feel that when we started our Allison project, that we got in on the tail end of a very long history of temperatures and ice thicknesses and snow depths that had been consistent probably at least since the 1930s or 40s. So we were able to see those um, meter and a half ice thicknesses on the lake and, and uh, snow depths and um, flooding on the Anoka River. This is a, a flood, flood area uh, on the Anoka River. One of the reasons why many of the communities on the Anoka um, uh, relocated, getting my students out there and questioning what was happening on their land and, uh, you know, that they could become an integral part of positive change or just understanding what was happening. That's say like 81.5, huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay, now you can snap it and pull it up. Okay, got it? Okay. Involvement with the kids is a huge part of this project to begin with, so um, in order to get a more uh, robust data set of ice thicknesses around Alaska, we want to work with the schools and have them take uh, regional ice thicknesses. So we're spread out all across the state and hoping to just sort of capture this moment in time of what ice thicknesses are like uh, around these different places. Um, to look at other things like ice quality, snow ice, overflow. That's where we start to get into our other tools like the chainsaw that we're using. Ice, uh, we care about ice because it's super important in Alaska as a platform for recreation, for travel, um, and it's just a part of our everyday life, you know. We've been traveling over ice for you know, hundreds of miles to get here to Shagluk. People in Shagluk use it all the time to get back and forth to the villages in the region, as well as set nets for fishing um, or to go gather wood. Um, so 
Knowing these ice conditions, knowing when ice is safe to travel is super important for pretty much everybody in Alaska, whether it's just for fun or for, you know, what they need to do to get by. Steady. Minus 13.9. No, they might not understand all of the calculations and but they understand that they understand what protocols are there for and they understand that data that they're gathering is important to um, support different theories or different ideas about how how and why climate change is happening the data that they're gathering is important to science and it's important you know, not only does science worldwide, it's again important to the tribe. You know, the data they're gathering is ultimately important to the tribes.